What I want to do today is I'm going to take a little bit of a different tact in the rapid fire session. Uh, instead of focusing specifically on a technology, I want to talk a little bit more about workflow because I think it's important to really demystify laser scanning to some extent and uh, bring a little reality to it, talk a little bit about where it is today and I think where it should be going in the future. So uh, I want to kind of go into this with a little bit of a uh, Alex Trebek impersonation. I don't have a great mustache, by the way, so just bear with me there. Um, so in this case, the category is laser scanning. The answer is one million. Does anybody have any idea what the question might be? I heard a lot of answers and I can't hear any one of them, so, but there's a hand up. I can't remember the sound you give. Ding, ding, I think you're right. So the question is, what is, and I don't think you actually gave it in a question, uh, points per second acquisition capability. So this is important. Let's take the next question. How about one billion? Anybody hazard a guess of what the question is? <laughs> yeah, you could look at it that way. Approximate points collected in a three station 30 minute scan. 1.5 gigs. Approximate size of a three minute, three, three station 30 minute scan. Okay, so I think the, the critical part is why are these numbers so important? Well, we're at a critical phase, not only in this industry, I think, relative to BIM and virtual design, but I think we're also at a critical phase specific to laser scanning and laser scanning workflow. Uh, I think what's really evident here is that we've gotten to the point where we're, we're critically exceeding the potential to actually use this data effectively. And I believe that there's also some difficulty and some mystery in terms of how do we actually use it and what is the return on the investment in a laser scanning process. Process. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. So the four key things that we see that are, that are really hindering the adaptation of laser scanning are we're collecting so much data it's difficult to share. Uh, the file sizes have become so big they're difficult to store. The data is not conducive to, to giving it to the partners or the key stakeholders on your projects. And lastly, the deliverables, I think, are not clearly defined. So I want to go through some of those uh, key points today. To start, because the conference is based around innovation, I think it's clear for us that we, sh we should understand what innovation means. So in order to do that, we go to the absolute voice of definition, which is Wikipedia. So scanning as innovation. So innovation in its broadest sense really refers to the creation of better or more effective products or processes that are accepted by markets, governments, and society. Okay? Uh, a, th a second portion of this in my estimation is that it differs to some extent from invention or renovation in that it generally signifies a substantial positive change compared to incremental changes. So how does this really apply here? I believe that you could probably argue that laser scanning has not necessarily been an innovative technology in the construction industry. You know, there are some people who have used it and have used it successfully because they've gone through a process that enables them to do it. But all in all, and I believe in the broader sense, the construction industry has not seen laser scanning as an innovative tool. And there's some reasons for that. I think the first is that we really need to see innovation in laser scanning from a couple of perspectives. If we look at it from this simple box, okay, accessibility, can everybody that needs it access, access the data? Is it simple to acquire and simple to use and process? Is it well defined in terms of what you want to achieve? Is it shareable with all the appropriate people that need to use it? And the last one is E57, which I'll talk about in a second, which really helps to define some of what we're talking about here. So from a shareability or an accessibility standpoint, it should be really simple. It should be accessible. Now, I do have a disclaimer here. I'm going to talk about some developmental objectives. I'm going to talk about some things that look like they're potential concepts but may not be usable functional products today. Uh, and I think that's important because I want to make sure that we all are aware of what the, what the functionalities are coming